working on more Alaska flies, so bringing you another one here. Uh, this is going to be the uh, Alaska Popsicle, and it's a kind of a legendary fly. Legend has it it was developed by a crusty old guide who was running out of materials, still had clients to guide, didn't have materials to tie his normal flies, so did have a bunch of marabou, so he came up with this pattern, uh, and turns out that it's a pretty effective one. Uh, so the hook we're using here is going to be the Daiichi 2220 in size 2. This is a 4X long hook, and that seems like a weird hook for this, but in the end you'll see kind of why uh, I use this one. But uh, on that we've got a quarter inch hot pink cone head, and we're going to put about 10 wraps of our 025 wire on here, lead wire. Cut that piece a little short and twist that on there. I, those tag ends are a little short to uh, break off, so I'm going to reach in here with an old pair of scissors and nip the tag ends of those wires off and just kind of smash the, uh, the ends down. Slide that up inside our bead. Get that set. Uh, I'm going to use two different threads for this one. You don't have to use two, but I do just because... Uh, first one we're going to use is going to be Uni uh, 6 aught Orange. And we're going to do the same old. We're going to start up behind the uh, lead, build up a little lead, uh, little thread bump there. And then we're going to wrap open crossing wraps across our lead wire. A few times, go forward and back a couple of times with open crisscrosses. And then... We're going to start laying down a little bit tighter, more touching wraps, and really bind our lead there in place, give ourselves a nice comfortable base. Now we're going to cover this whole shank with thread. These don't necessarily have to be exactly touching wraps, but you do want to pack your thread in there pretty good because this is the base for our uh, flash material that we're going to put on here. So we're going to wrap all the way back. And you can see I kind of hold this tag here. I kind of hold it at an angle. Pull it tight and hold it at an angle. And that way as you wrap, you kind of you can kind of use that as a guide. You, you pull it, push your thread back and it kind of slides down that tag end and stacks in there pretty good. So as we get back here to the back, now we're really going to make sure we're we're uh, doing touching wraps. And just for the fun of it, we're going to build a little orange uh, butt section on this fly. So we're going to wrap just down past the bend of the hook just a little bit, or into the bend just a little bit, with good touching wraps. And then we're going to come forward and leave ourselves a little orange butt section there. On our fly and we're going to stop there right about the uh, end of the shank right above the uh, barb of the hook we'll trim off our end there now for the rest of this fly we're going to excuse me for the body of this fly we're going to use some large silver tinsel and that's just to cover our our hook shank here so we're going to start in the back hold it on a little bit of an angle Give ourselves a couple of wraps and then a couple, tighten it down. And now we're going to wrap forward. And again, we want to wrap the rest of the way forward with some pretty close wraps. They don't have to be perfect, but you do want this underbody, these thread wraps to be pretty smooth because we are going to wrap our tinsel over top of that. You don't want uh, too much variation in the body because it does show through to the tinsel. And we're going to finish right up here behind our lead wraps. And you can see I didn't cut off a piece. I used these little uh, bobbin, spool bobbins. Uh, it's an elastic band with some bead in it to hold, and I'm just going to let that dangle there. And then one of the key steps to making sure this fly stays durable is we're going to take a little head cement, and we don't necessarily want a lot, but we do want to just take and drag some along our body, uh, along our thread wraps there, just to barely coat it with some head cement and we do that just for durability uh, basically we're going to we're, we're gluing our tinsel in place 
So now we're going to grab our tinsel and we're going to start wrapping and we're just going to use the rotary function on our vise and we're just going to wrap this forward nice uniform overlapping wraps and wrap this forward and I could have used my bobbin cradle but I didn't so we'll undo that thread a little bit and then We'll continue wrapping those tinsel wraps forward till we get right up behind our lead. And finish that off with a couple thread wraps. Snip off the end of our tinsel. Cover that down and we're done with our orange thread. I want to just throw a quick three turn whip finish in there, pull it down, and I'm not going to worry about putting any more head cement on right there because the uh, covering we put on our thread prior is going to be good enough to hold that in place. Now we're going to switch to our other color, and we are Uni 6 Ot Purple. So we're going to start this on right behind our cone head and cover our lead wraps. Now the remainder of this fly is actually going to be tied up here on these lead wraps. So from here back is just body and it's done. So like I said, this fly is made out of marabou. So we're gonna start with a single orange marabou quill here. And we've kind of preened the fibers straight out. And we're gonna take the tip and we're gonna tie that tip on or tie that uh, hack the marabou on like we're doing a hackle. And we're going to tie it in by the tip, give it a few good wraps to lock it in there, trim off our end. And now we're going to wrap this marabou just like a hackle. Now one quick little tip, if you take your scissors and you kind of rub them down the marabou here, it kind of preens your fibers backwards for you to start out with. Makes wrapping these forward considerably easier. So we're going to start right here at the back of our lead wraps and we're going to wrap these forward in touching turns and as we wrap we are going to preen these fire fibers backwards towards the rear of the fly so that we don't uh, bind any down and lay it in there and we're going to take just as many turns as we can with our marabou and it will tell you the marabou itself kind of dictates how many wraps you can take because as you get down here to the uh, to the butt section, you can't really see it in there, but that stem gets really thick and it does not wind and you can't make it wind. And if you try, you just end up messing up your flies. So you want to look on that marabou, find the section of stem that looks nice and thin and pliable and you want to use that and trim off our butt section there. Now we're going to moisten our fingers a little bit, moisten these fibers, pull them backwards, and then we're going to bind down this butt of our stem real nice, and lay our fibers backwards along the shank. Now we're going to uh, go to our old reliable flash material here, we're going to rainbow crystal flash. Pull off two strands, even up the ends, and we're going to tie in a little extra flash. Now this, this flash section is optional. Our hook shank is all nice and flashed up, so you really don't need this, but I do like to uh, throw a little bit of it in there because our body is a little static and this moves with the fibers a little better. So we'll lay it in on the front side of the shank here. Tie it down. We still got some unruly marabou. There we go. And we'll pull it up and over the top to the far side. And we'll lock it in there right on the far side. Make sure they're where we want them. And lock them down with a couple wraps. And we're going to preen our everything backwards here. Get it in the marabou. Snip that off. And there you've got your uh, first section of marabou. Uh, number two, we're going with a pink, and you can use a hot pink or fuchsia, 
whatever you want here. But same deal. We've preened our fibers square to the hook or square to the uh, stem. And you can see down here, this one you can kind of see, you can see how fat this stem is in this portion. And then right here, it tapers down real nice and stays pretty consistent for the rest of the length of the fiber. So you want to watch for that transition point and that's pretty much the maximum length you can get for these. So I'm going to take the tip here, just going to lay it in on top, just like we did before, bind it down with a couple of wraps, trim off our tip, bring our thread back to where we want our wraps to start, bring it forward, clip on our hackle plier, and use our little scissor trick on the stem. Start printing those fibers backwards for us and start wrapping them. And again, same deal here, touching wraps, working our way forward, printing all the fibers backwards as we go, and using as much of the usable stem of this feather as we can. And that looks like that's about it right there. So we'll come in here with one. Two wraps, grab our scissors, trim that off, preen our fibers rearward, and tie this off. You want to make sure you're trapping that stem. I went probably half a turn too far into the thicker part of that stem, and so it's giving me a little bit of trouble here as I tie it down, but that's okay. One thing when you're wrapping these fibers, don't feel like you have to end up up on top every time. Just wherever you get to the to the part of the stem that you can't use anymore, stop there, tie it off, and move on to the next one. So third fiber here is going to be purple marabou. You can see we're up real nice and close to our cone head at this point, and that's fine. We actually want this uh, last piece of marabou to really tuck up in the back side of our cone. And that helps lay everything backwards. So same deal. Preen our fibers. Clean them up. Tie it in by the tip here, bring the thread back to where we want to start wrapping, bring it forward, scissor trick on the stem, both sides, lays those fibers backwards for us to start with, grab our hackle pliers, and grab the stem. This batch of marabou I have, the, the purple doesn't have a particularly good stem, so I have to fight with the purple fibers just a little bit. Uh, just the nature of the of marabou, it's it varies quite a bit. If you can buy, I had to order this marabou online this last time, and you get very mixed results ordering online. If you can, buy your marabou in a shop where you can take it out of the package and really see if you're getting uh, quality materials. See, we broke our stem off there. Fortunately, I had my finger on it and caught it, so we'll just clip it back on. And there we go. We got our purple. Moisten that a little bit. Stroke everything backwards. Grab our thread. Have a couple trip wraps. Trim off our stem. And. End of our stem there. Like I said, this is one I have to fight with a little bit because I just didn't have great stems. But there we go. Got the end of our stem captured. Going to spin our thread to flatten it out. Give ourselves a couple whip finishes. One. Three turns there. Do that again. Two. Three turn whip finish. Pop our thread off. Grab our head cement and take the uh, point of our needle, a little bit of cement on it, and pull everything back. Take our needle and tuck it down in there and force that head cement into the back of the cone. And there you go. There's your uh, Alaska popsicle. And you can see now, as we have the finished fly here, kind of pull these fibers so you can see them. You can see where that hook ends up back there. 
it ends up way back here in the tips of our fibers. Really helps keep these fibers from fouling around the hook and keeping these in that nice bullet form as it works backwards. And this fly in the water being all marabou, when it fishes, it just comes alive and just pulsates and breathes and in the water. So there you go. There's uh, my version of the Alaska Popsicle.